Hi everyone, welcome back to Wesno's Tech News and Reviews. Today we'll be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2. So I think it is one of the best smartwatches on the market today. But with every good, there's always a bad or something that could have been improved on or done better. So today we'll be talking about the Galaxy Watch Active 2 and its five pros as well as its five cons. So back to back. Anyways, let's get into this review. Let's do it. So before we kick off with the pros and the cons, let me give you a quick summary of what the watch is all about, because you really need to see it in perspective before we get into the details. So let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy Watch 2 in action. This is a 44 millimeter version, so the bigger one. You can also get the small one, the 40 millimeter one, but having a seven inch wrist size, this one looks the part and it looks just right. So I think that the 46 millimeter watches are slightly too big. The 44 is just the right balance between medium to slightly larger, but it does give you a 1.4 inch display size. And the resolution here is wow. This is top of the range. 418 by 418 pixels. This is basically top of the range. And you'd expect that on a watch that does cost 419 pounds or just under 500 bucks. Now, what can I say? It's round. It's got an absolutely amazing clasp. It's got an absolutely amazing strap that comes as basic with it, but of course you can upgrade to almost anything because it only has the generic 20 millimeter straps. So you can either go and get them from Samsung or you can get them anywhere on the net. So get yourself a leather strap, get yourself a steel strap, whatever it might be, it might look slightly better, but I doubt it's gonna get more convenient and more comfortable than the original TPU rubber strap that it comes with. It's soft, the clip and tuck clasp is absolutely spot on. You get enough holes just to find the right fit. And what I like about this strap, the original Samsung strap, is that no matter how long you wear this, during the night, during the day, your wrist does not get sweaty. You do not get any irritation marks. This is top class strap. Anyways, enough about the strap. If we talk about the watch case. So again, it's round, it's all steel, and you get an option of either steel or aluminium. So I've got the aluminium, blue aluminium case here. You've got two buttons on the right hand side. That's it. So you get two buttons as well as a touch activated display. And you will absolutely adore the thin bezels on this watch face. Now these are not the thin bezels of the Fitbit Versa. Oh no, because they're, they're mighty thick. They're not as thick as the Apple Watch Series 6 even. Like these bezels are paper thin, like that. Definitely love that. If you look on top of the watch, so this is rounded 3D glass. So you can see it rounds not just to the center, but at the edges of the watch case as well. Feels solid, feels lovely. And the viewing angles on this watch are also very good. So you can almost see it when you have it almost at 180 degrees, you can still see the crisp display. In regards to the features and functions, this watch has a lot to offer. So something as basic as continuous heart rate monitoring? Yes, of course. What about actually downloading apps? Easy. Go to your Galaxy app gallery and download many, many faces as well as apps, games, useful apps. You can get almost anything on this watch because the ecosystem for Samsung wearables is quite wide and varied. You also have a good community here. The app, well, we're gonna get onto that. You get plenty of sport modes, but you could have a bit more. But I think we've said enough about the watch in general. Let's get into the specifics. So now we'll be covering off five positives and five negatives. And these are the back-to-back -back positives and negatives because you can look at either side, well, depending on how much you like the Samsung watch. Anyways, let's get into it. First of all, let's start with the biggest pro as well as the biggest con in the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active and not just the Samsung. I think this relates to quite a few smartwatch manufacturers out there and that is battery life. 
So in this rather large case, well, 44 millimeter case, you've got, well, it's not that thick, but it's not that thin either. So it's just over 14 millimeters high on your wrist. Now it doesn't catch up on anything, but that does mean that there's a lot of space for a big battery. And this battery, well, as the manufacturer claims, will last you up to three days. That is okay for a powerful smartwatch these days. But then again, when you've got the garments to go against, which can last a week, two weeks, or even up to a month, if they are solar activated, three days is not much. And let me just say, and that's without the always on display. Now I've been using the watch, having all the notifications switched on. I've been using GPS. I've been tracking some exercises and of course sleep tracking because the sleep tracking on this watch is spectacular. You get very good visuals in your app, you get good recommendation and you get a lot of good detail. But we'll talk about that in another review. Now the battery size, so the claimed battery life is three days. Really all I'm getting out of it is a day and maybe another five, six hours. So I usually charge it up just before I go to sleep. So when I'm not actually exercising, when I'm not taking too much steps, so I don't have much to actually track. And then I switch it on and then I actually put it onto my wrist just before I go to sleep. I sleep with it, I get through the whole day and usually I've got about 10, 15% left just before I charge it up again before the next night. But this is with a lot of exercises. Now during the actual night, so I'm not using always on display, the battery sink is only by about, I don't know, five, seven percent. So not much at all. It all happens during the day because you switch on the screen and I've got it on gesture control. So as soon as I raise the watch to my face, it switches on or I can actually touch it and the screen lights up as well. So I usually read a lot of my texts. I read my emails, everything from the watch face. I've even started taking calls off this watch because it's just so convenient. If I don't want to go and get my phone, all I do is I pick up the phone using the Bluetooth connection on the watch and I just speak into the microphone on the watch. And the, and the speaker is actually quite good here. You get a very clear conversation. Now I had a couple of conversations already on this watch and people just don't know if I'm talking into the phone, into some earphones, and they wouldn't even guess that I'm actually talking to my wrist. But because of that, the battery drain is significant. So your real battery life on this watch with typical usage is a maximum of one day and maybe just a little bit more. Anyways, that's the first pro and the con. The pro being that it does have a large battery size and with minimal usage, it will take you for two, two and a half days of use. But with typical usage, you'll be lucky to get a day and a half out of it. Anyways, let's get on to number two. The second pro and at the same time con is all about sport mode. Because at the end of the day, we are splashing out a lot of dosh for a smartwatch. Obviously, it has to be smart, but the smarts are not enough. We do want sports. And I've been checking the heart rate monitor on here. It is quite accurate. Now, the Samsung here does show you more steps than the garments by about 7-8%. So it's not major, but still, it's an overcount. But in regards to actual sport profiles, let's think about it. So the pro is there are seven auto tracked activities and they are the basics. So you're running, you're walking, you're elliptical, you're rowing. It's got the dynamic workouts and I think biking as well. So it gives you seven auto recognized activities. And usually when you are walking about and as long as you're doing it for more than 10 minutes, so the watch doesn't mix it up with just some casual activity, it will start auto tracking. So it will ask you on your watch face, do you want to manually set up the walk or the run or whatever activity you're doing, or do you want the watch to track it automatically? And I just click on automatically and it does its tracking. And that is great. If we talk about the built-in sport modes, there are 39. And you'd think that 39 is plenty. And you'd be right, because it does cover off the usual stuff. Considering the watch actually has GPS, well, inbuilt GPS, dual inbuilt GPS, you are mostly okay with GPS tracked activities such as your bike, such as your cycling, your running, your walking, and so forth. You can even do open water swimming in this watch because it is water resistant up to 50 meters. Now, just yesterday, 
I was on the tennis court and I was doing a heart rate test between the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active as well as a sport watch from Sounto. And the benchmark was the Polar H10 ECG chest strap across my chest. Now, the issue that I had with this is that on the chest strap, using the Polar Beat app, I could choose the tennis workout. On the Suunto 3, I could also choose a tennis workout. But the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active, which has a whopping 39 sport modes, does not have tennis as a workout. Instead, you've got about 15 workouts, which are specifically leg curls, arm curls, you've got abs, you've got push-ups, you've got crunches, you've got all those workouts which should be just encompassed, well, unless it's a full-on sport watch, into just one sport mode, the gym sport mode. It also has a lot of the cardio workouts actually broken out into specific exercises. And really, on most of the manufacturers, they're just encompassed into one sport mode, and that is cardio. Why are things broken out one by one in this watch? So what you're really left with is a cardio workout, gym workout, a yoga, and all the core sport modes like your running, walking, cycling, elliptical trainer, uh, rowing machine, swimming. So you're really left with about 15 or 20 sport modes. Everything else is just a bit irrational. So let's say you're in the gym and you're doing a gym workout. You'll be spending more time fiddling with your watch, changing the sport mode rather than working out and keeping up the intensity. And I think that's a big con. So on one side, the pro is you've got 39 sport modes. You've got seven auto tracked activities. That is all great. But considering that some of those sport modes are well, pretty much useless and they will waste your time while setting them up in the gym or while you're working out, I think that's a major con because really you're just left with about 20 core activities that this watch can track. Well, even tennis, it doesn't have it. It doesn't have basketball. It doesn't have football. And that is an issue. Anyway, let's get on to the third pro and con of the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2. The third pro is the extra availability of functions on this particular watch. You get a lot. You get your heart rate monitoring. You get your ECG monitoring. And considering that the ECG graph is wow, you can actually save it down to your app. You can share it with your doctor, with your GP, with your family, with your consultant, whoever. This is very useful stuff and very advanced. It's even got a blood pressure reading that it can do. Now, of course, you do have to calibrate it against a real blood pressure monitor just to get things going, but I've tried this out and the readings are very accurate with the Watch Active 2. So these are not the blood pressure readings that you would get from some cheaper watch from God knows where. No, this is the real deal. So you do get a lot of this extra cool functions and features. In fact, when my mom's gonna come and visit me, I'm gonna have to gift her this watch because this is just going to be so much use for her. When she has to do an ECG and send off to her doctor, when she needs to do a blood pressure readings, well, of course, this is not a medical device, but it does give you ballpark figures. So in regards to health, great one big pro, but there's a major con, a major flaw here. The fact is the Galaxy Watch Active 2 does not measure your SpO2, aka blood oxygen saturation. And that is a huge, huge minus because SpO2 is such a big indicator of your cardiovascular health, of your respiratory health. You need that indicator to give you a full picture of your health. And this is what this very expensive Samsung is trying to do. So there we go. Now let's get on to the fourth pro and con of this watch price price is a major consideration when you're getting yourself a smart gadget considering this watch is beautiful in so many ways it's very useful it's as smart as it can get you can talk into the watch you can easily control your music player on your phone from the watch because the screen is so big 1.4 inches that's absolutely huge the resolution is amazing but 
419 pounds or 500 bucks that's a lot of money now apple yes they charge a lot of money for their smartwatches but you still can get much more budget models from the apple platform the galaxy watch active 2 costs more than the top of the range galaxy watch 4. this is a lot of money to pay for 419 pounds so i could get myself let's say a garmin venu 2 as well as a great fitness tracker let's say something like the huawei band 6 which does its full day spo2 monitoring but on the other hand the venu 2 from garmin also does that so i don't know short battery life great features but missing spo2 lots of functionality only one and a half day battery and all that for almost 500 bucks i think price is a major consideration for this watch now the pro here is that yes the price does set it apart from the rest of the players in the market so really you're just left with the apple watch as competition so it does put it in that range of the best of the best that's great but then again you do have a lot of limitations and restrictions on this watch which maybe don't warrant this huge price but then Apple is faced with exactly the same issue. Very short battery life and quite a few shortcomings. But you can watch my review of the Apple Watch Series 6 in the link I've left just above me right now. Anyways, let's get on to the fifth pro and con. Let's talk apps. So of course the Samsung Galaxy Health app is great. It's very informative. It's extremely easy to use. It's probably one of the best health apps out there today. It's just so simplistic. It shows you when you want to see. It doesn't throw these options at you. And lots of buttons and clicks and pages. No, it's all very simple. It's basic, but yet the visuals are great. It's easy to use. And that's a pro. But the con is that even though I'm using a Samsung phone, I still need to download two apps to use a Samsung wearable. So you need the actual Samsung wearable app and then you need your Samsung Health app. And that is at least inconvenient because on one app, you set up your wearable to how you want it to act. While on the other app, you have to go in and see uh, what your health metrics are. I don't think that's convenient. I don't think that's the right way to go about things. You've got a great wearable device. You've got a great health app. But why is your wearable app separate from the health app? They go hand in hand. So now you need to go to two places to do one action. And I think that's a massive con. Anyways, thank you for watching this review of the Galaxy Watch Active 2. All in all, I think it's a great device, but I do think that there are major considerations that you have to note before splashing out a lot of dosh for this watch. If these pros overweigh the cons, then get it because it is a great smartwatch and it's got great fitness tracking capability. I love it, but you have to be aware of the cons. Thank you for watching this. If you did enjoy it, please drop me a like. And if you wanna see more of the same, you know what to do. Click on the red subscribe button below the video and I'll see you in the next one.